And now we're up to part six of survival analysis in R. This is Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. Uh, now we're talking about the real modeling part of survival analysis. And it's pretty straightforward, uh, so we're going to keep moving through it relatively quickly. We're up to section nine in the code, and we're going to fit what's called a Cox proportional hazards model. Uh, Cox proportional hazards is a very common way of dealing with survival uh, models. Um, modeling in survival analysis and again I don't want to start talking about the details of what it means or how it works uh, I just am showing you the R implementation and so R has a standard function Cox pH uh, you specify inside the parentheses just like you would another regression model in R your dependent variable and the the predictor variables, your response variable on the left, and then a tilde and on your right, any um, explanatory variables, input variables into your equation. Um, so we, we generate that fit. Uh, we can take a look at it once we have generated it. Uh, it gives us coefficients. It gives us a significance level. And in this case, uh, the the reading of the significance is a bit different. Um, we have to test a few different things uh, on the fit. Uh, so we look at residuals. Uh, there's a, a cox.zph function that we can run and then um, plot. We want to see that those residuals are are normally distributed or loosely normally distributed around um, zero and actually we're looking for this Cox ZPH test to not be significant right that is if it was significant it would mean that uh, there's a bad pattern in our residuals and there there are actually other methods we can look at martingale residuals later in the code there's there's I'll sh you can see in the codes ways to generate uh, many different kinds of residuals for this. Um, those are all part of the regression diagnostics that are a little bit more uh, tricky for uh, survival analysis models than for standard linear regression. But again, I don't want to get too much into that. It's just that you can do all of that in the R environment. Um, Cox.zph is a, is a major function that you're always going to be using to test those um, and then plotting manually generating the residuals uh, with a specific method method that's specified by type um, and then plotting those will help you look at those but let's go back to the just the um, the fit itself we're here we're, we're starting with ver one variable at a time to see which ones might be significant for us to throw into the final model um, and so we're just getting a coefficient on one uh, variable. Now the, the Cox proportional hazards model is uh, exponential. I'll just, I will pull up a Wikipedia page for you uh, just to show you um, the form of the model is exponential. So when we get a coefficient, we have to remember that that coefficient is put into an exponential model. We can't just read it straight off the bat like a, a linear regression coefficient. Uh, if it is positive, it means that it's a positive effect, uh, but we have to exponentiate it and then compare it to the um, actual magnitude of, of the input variables to see what the effect is. So typically what you do is take these equations take these coefficients and plug them back into the equation to get some idea of how much movement you would see. So for example, age is going to go up and down by one to five years. I might uh, try to predict how much will my risk increase uh, if I'm five years older uh, if, if, or if there's a patient who's five years older uh, or younger um, and so on for other other things. So these tests are run uh, for all the different variables. Um, that, that, so this whole long section in, in section 9 is, is um, a bit repetitive because we're, 
we run the same Cox proportional hazard regression function, Cox pH, for all these different potential variables. Um, and we are we're going through di you know different steps to improve the modeling. I don't want to um, make this too long of a video by discussing the the meaning of all those in detail. Uh, I'm going to go on to section 10 and section 10 is uh, a little bit more on residuals. So as I mentioned you can you can compute the residuals by several different methods. Uh, sometimes uh, you know those are called for uh, and asked for uh, you know different people may have different preferences or it may be just something you want to to go through yourself and look at. Uh, it's just this residuals function that takes a model and then a type of residual. So it's 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 basically just plugging that in uh, again. Um, so the code here again the the code in section 10 reflects uh, you know the actual analysis of this case. So we, we're looking for potential collinearity among some variables. Um, and ultimately, uh, there are several steps. There's a stepwise regression where we can um, use uh, step AIC is, a, is an implementation of a stepwise regression that will take a list of variables um, and a starting model and start to either go forward or backwards uh, to iterate and find the best model for you. So that uh, step AIC is contained in the, in the mass package um, and mass is is a, a standard package modern applied statistics with S. That's a, a book that's been around for quite a while in the R world. Uh, so there's some things that are that are quite good in that mass package that are have been implemented for a while. Um, the step AIC method can be applied to any sort of um, any regression model. So you, we can we can put a linear regression in there, we can put lots of things. So so I'm first specifying that my base model is going to be a Cox pH model, Cox proportional hazards model, starting with um, RecServe modeled against uh, the pro progesterone receptors. So it starts there and uh, can go up to um, a list of various other significant variables um, that we've identified and then we we end up with the final model. Now I'm not going to run all this code because again um, there's there's finding a model, testing it, looking at the residuals of the model, uh, back and forth, back and forth until you get a, a good fit. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention, uh, I, I've just been saying Cox proportional hazards model, is that the way the Cox proportional hazards model is specified takes into account the fact that some of the variables are censored. So that is um, is built into the model. That's, that's one of the reasons we are using this and not other uh, more standard uh, types of regression. Okay, um, let's do section 11 and then we'll wrap up with this part of the video. So um, section 11 goes even further into the residual question. Uh, just shows you how you can look at, at all the different types of residuals. Uh, specified and you can plot them um, against different variables um, or in this case we're, we're, we're looking at the logarithmic uh, recurrence time and the residuals plotted against that. Um, those That's a me again a methodology issue. The one thing that's often asked for in in survival analysis is what's called the Cox-Snell residual. And at least in my work I was unable to find a quick 
easy function that just said Coxnell residual. Here it goes. Um, so in that case, I had to uh, compute it myself, which is just by subtracting the um, censored flag minus the uh, martingale residual and then you can evaluate the Coxnell residuals uh, against its own um, survival model um, and it looks a little something like this once you once you plot it. So uh, the code at the end of section 11 shows you how you manually implement uh, the Coxnell residuals. There is no sort of quick instant function to, to do that analysis, at least as far as I know in R. Okay, let's stop there uh, because that is the treatment of the Cox proportional hazard model and following up with analysis. So we'll, we'll stop at that point and we'll come back with the AFT models, the accelerated failure time models.